Uh, Carl? Yes. Is this video about World War Two? It is indeed, yes. Why? Oh, it's just that the guy's got a really German sounding name. Yeah, he was a Nazi, just try and forget that bit. <laughs> to quote Halo 3 for a moment, tank beats everything. If you don't believe me, allow me to tell you the story of the time in World War II when someone used one to shoot down a Russian plane. No, it is, but first, a little backstory, my friend. In 1943, a German tank ace called Otto Karius was tasked, with, along with his platoon of Tiger tanks, to go to the Belarusian city of this place right here, because I, I, I can't pronounce that, to go there and with a simple mission, shoot every tank they found right in the face. Unluckily for the Russians, tank punching just so happened to be Otto's best skill, because although there aren't any exact figures on how many tanks he personally destroyed during his war career, a number most often quoted is about 150. That's pretty bad. Yeah, but he was also a Nazi, so fuck him. Yeah, fuck him. Yeah. Still pretty cool though. <laughs> Please don't quote me on that. <laughs> He's still pretty cool though. Carl Smallwood about a Nazi. <laughs> probably don't need that, do I? That's probably not a, a quote I need floating around the internet. During World War II, there wasn't really anything on the battlefield that could reliably stand up to a tank. Their armour was too thick for any weapons to penetrate, even if they did have like a box of chocolates and some like nicely scented lube. This is especially true of the Tiger tanks Otto and his men were driving, so their armour was thicker than even the, like, the biggest tanks of the era, and they were pretty much considered bulletproof as far as any weapon was concerned beyond 800 metres. Again! What do you want, Tom? All right, you're aware of how fucking badass the Tiger Tank was, right? It's like one of the only tanks I've heard of. Yeah, that's because it's got the best name, the Tiger. Anti-tank and anti-armor rounds couldn't damage it at all beyond 800 meters. It's pretty impressive, but here's the best bit. It could also hit reliably from over 1,000 meters away with its own rounds, meaning it could engage tanks from literally so far away they couldn't retaliate. So it was the like World War II tank equivalent of just holding a short guy at arm's length and letting him swing at you while you just punch him in the ribs. You gotta hand it to the Nazis. That's a fucking good name for a tank. It's like, oh man, we've been attacked by tigers. <laughs> oh shh, because like, no matter what you say, right, it's the name of a tank and also the name of a giant animal that rips people to shreds. So no matter what interpretation of it you accept, right, on World War II, that's terrifying. So if you're in World War II, you're in a bunker and something like, there's tigers outside. It doesn't matter if it's a tiger or a tank, you are still going to fucking shit yourself because either way, you are fucked. Which one would you rather have outside? I don't actually know. I can't outrun a tiger, but at the same time, I don't think I can outrun a tank either. Then again, I could shoot a tiger. I reckon with the most luck in the world, you could probably just be able to fight a tiger and win. Obviously, you if can't you, really fight a tank. No, if you, I reckon you could take a tank if you punch it hard enough. I've done it in Halo before. But Carl, real life isn't like Halo. I, think, I wish it was. <laughs> Things would be so much easier if real life was more like Halo. Well, energy sword could be your life. No, that's the most stupid fucking weapon in all of video games. It's a sword that has ammo. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the one benefit of a sword is that it never runs out of ammo, and they decide to fix that by making you can only swing it ten times. Like, yeah, great idea, guys. What happens after the tenth guy? Oh, I pull out my gun. <laughs> I just love the idea though of calling it the tiger. What was it in German though? Uh, I think it was tiger. I don't know how to pronounce tiger giant. It's, or panzer. It's like Panzerfaust, which is panther cannon. Like it's it. not, but that's what I think it means. I <laughs> presume, like panzer camp, I it probably means something in German. I just always assume it means panther cannon. Because if I said someone's got the panther cannon, I'd just surrender straight away. So you know what? No. I am not I am not having on my gravestone written hit by a panther. His final designation was Panzerkampfwagen 6. Tigerhouse.e So that translates to Panther Cannon Shooting Tiger Warrior Which is a fucking amazing name for a tank So I'd just call it like Megatron Deathfoot 3000 <laughs> Have you ever told you what my friend wants to call his kid? He wants to call his kid Dick Smasher Because he says any kid with the name is going to get picked on But no one's going to pick on Dick Smasher <laughs> So despite being completely and utterly bulletproof as far as most weapons on the Eastern Front were concerned, it didn't stop the Russian fighter planes from continually shooting at Otto's tank and the rest of his platoon. This really annoyed his like second in command and his gunner, uh, Under Officer Kramer, who got really, really pissed off at the sound of the bullets continually pinging against the side of the hull. So he did what anyone would do, 
turn the tank's gun, slowly raised it and pointed it into the oncoming path of the planes. Now I should point out now that shooting down a plane with a tank is a feat in World War II that most people consider impossible and there's only been one real recorded instance of it ever happening and it happened that day. I should also point out that despite it being a feat that most consider impossible, Kramer managed to pull it off on his second shot. That's fucking ridiculous. It is, but again remember Nazi, so try and tone down the enthusiasm just a little bit. That, that, that's very average. Yes, that's better. The person who was decidedly more impressed than we are, because obviously, you know, Nazis, was Otto Carius himself, a man who, remember, killed 150 tanks personally throughout the war. He described it as a feat unparalleled on the Eastern Front, so you know it's pretty fucking impressive. Proof that tank really does beat everything as long as you are sufficiently pissed off. <laughs> I'm self-conscious about my nipples, like Drax the Destroyer. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. I better? No. Okay. I'll keep going about your nipples if you don't. Please don't talk about my nipples. Like, comment, subscribe. Better? So German people, they kind of have a reputation for not being very funny. Well, Swiss German people, I'd argue, are the funniest motherfuckers I've ever met. I was in Switzerland, at this place called Interlaken. The first night we were there, me and my friend, we went to a pub for a beer. We walked in and the, we said, oh, how much is it? And the lady said, five franc each? Yeah, five francs. So two beers, please. She comes over, puts the two beers down. 50 franc. I'm sorry? 50 franc. Me and my friend, did we hear her wrong? It's like, that's all the money we have. And we pull out a 50 franc and she goes, I'm just kidding, it's five. <laughs> and we both went, oh, you got us. How many foreigners did you get out with? No, no, just you guys. I'm kidding, I get everyone. So. And my friend, knows I'm scared of heights. So while we're there, this place is known as like an extreme sports destination. So he booked us to go paragliding. As we get up to the top of the mountain, ready to go, my friend shouts over to the guy I've got on my back, ready to take his paraglide. Oh, he's scared of heights, by the way. And the guy goes, are you really? And go, yeah. He goes, okay, run. He's pushing me forward, we run. And we're in midair and he can feel me almost shitting my pants over up there. And he goes, don't worry, don't worry. No one ever dies while paragliding. Really? Yeah, it's hitting the ground that kills you. <laughs> so already, I'm shitting bricks. And then while we're gliding up, um, he took his hands off of the two things that guide it. And I noticed this and I went, are your hands supposed to be off that? Oh my God, no! <laughs> and uh, knowing that he could just take his hands off and it wouldn't matter. And he tries to calm me down by saying, hey, have you ever seen any videos of birds attacking paragliders? No, I haven't. Does that happen a lot? No. Around here, yes, but no. <laughs> and as we go in, my friend, who's not scared of heights, paraglides past us. And do you know what my guy decided to do? He said, oh no, you're getting too close, and veered wildly to the left. <laughs> and we get down to the floor, and he says, how was that? And he goes, not very good, to be honest. Goes, sure you won't do it again? No, I'm all right. So he hands me this little, I don't know what it is, um, the things you attach to the back of parachutes, you know, the trails. He said, oh, this is a Swiss condom. It's guaranteed to be 99%, non-effective, and disappoint your parents. Have a nice day. Climbed in a van and went back to Top Mountain to do it again. I spent pretty much all of that trip flying through the air, pooping my pants, because every time I tried to get relaxed, the guy would veer to the left or say there was an eagle coming for us, or people were getting too close, or that he'd lost control. <laughs> awful businessman, though. You know what? Come, come, and, come and join this thing you're scared of. I'll terrify you the whole way so you'll never recommend it to your friends. Yeah, that's pretty much it, yeah. I won't recommend it either. <laughs>